Welcome to the Human Body Systems project, specifically the computer science component in which we're going to be creating an interactive scene. Uh, just so you know, as you are preparing this part of your project, you need to know that there is one thing needed prior to coding. You've got to find, upload, and clean a minimum of five body parts. Um, three of those five should belong to your system. So again, you should have a minimum of five body parts and three of those five should belong to your system. Now, it may be difficult to find a pituitary gland. So if you just want to have a sprite with the text that says pituitary gland, that's fine. You can have that as well instead of trying to find a picture of a pituitary gland because uh, that might be a little bit difficult to do. So once you have found your sprites, you'll go to Scratch and start a new project. You can see that um, I have uh, uploaded my sprites. So um, if you uh, have found your sprites, what you're going to want to do is click on the file upload. And once you upload it, it will take you, it'll bring the sprite up. And what you'll want to do is, as I mentioned, clean up your sprite. So you'll go to costumes in order to clean it up. There's three things that you can really do from costumes that will help you. First of all, if you click on the erase icon and change the size of the eraser, you can start to erase things around your icon, or sorry, around your image so that you have only the image that you need uh, to work with. The second thing that you can do here is if you click on the select icon, you can select the uh, image and you can using the resizing boxes make it smaller or bigger as needed, wider or uh, uh, thinner as needed. Okay. And then the last thing that you're going to do from this costumes page is give it a name. So I would say to name it descriptively. I've got my heart here, I've got my liver here, my lung right here, and my trachea right here. Okay, so I've got everything labeled, um, and lastly, uh, and again, just to reemphasize, the thing that I'm going to do from the costumes tab is to um, erase, um, make it bigger or smaller, and give it a, a file name. If I did want to add the text to it, uh, just like I said, if um, if it's going to be too hard to find a picture of a pituitary gland. Well, now I can just put that right here and it'll be associated with this. The issue is that Scratch is very unforgiving. So if I click outside of that, I can't go back and edit that. So what I'll need to do is click undo in order for me to rewrite that in a way that I like. So if I click, uh, if I write trachea, I can resize that to make it smaller. And then I can put that right here so that people know that is a trachea and now I've got my trachea taken care of. Okay. Now what we want to do is work with a stage. So I'm not working with sprites anymore. I'm going to be working with my stage. What I want to do is go ahead and click on, or, uh, click on the paintbrush icon. It says paint new backdrop from underneath this new backdrop section. So I'll click on paint new backdrop. There was a backdrop there already, but I want to paint my own backdrop, so I'll just click on this X to get rid of that backdrop. And I will have, uh, I will go ahead and click the paint uh, can icon, select a color from below, and then click on the canvas. Okay, so once the background color has been placed, this is going to be my background for my scene. What I want to do now is click on the text box icon and type the instructions for the interactive scene. Maybe something like move the parts of the respiratory system past the red line or move the parts of whatever system. So I'll go ahead and write move the parts and you can see you can't see it right now. So what I'll want to do is do command A and then make sure that that is actually black and then continue typing. Move the parts of the respiratory system past the red line. And I'm going to make my red line. If I do a command A to highlight everything, I can change the font to whatever font I like, okay? Um, and make it a different font. If I select on it, 
change it to a different font. Oh, it's being very unforgiving. So maybe what I want to do is go ahead, there we go. Uh, I can change the font to however I want it to look. Okay. Again, once I click outside of it, I can resize this using my resizing icons. I can resize it to whatever I want and move it wherever I want. It's probably best to just leave it right up at the top. That's probably going to be the easiest thing for you to do. So once I click outside of that, I've now got my background scene. The only uh, code that I want to add to this stage is to um, make sure that uh, the tr video transparency is not turned on. And I'll show you what that video transparency is. But instead of the backdrops tab, click on the scripts tab. Go to the events drawer and drag over when flag clicked. Okay. When flag clicked, I'm going to go to the sensing drawer and I'm going to drag over this block of code that says set video transparency to. And I'm actually going to set that to 100%. So I don't want uh, the screen to be transparent when the flag is clicked. And so that's why I have this code here. Next, we will create a new sprite which will serve as the line to cross for the game. So what I want you to do is, we're not working in the stage anymore, we're working with a new sprite. So click on the um, paintbrush icon, and now I've got a new sprite to create. What I will do is click on the costumes tab, oh, it's already there for me, and click on the line icon. You'll notice that when I click on the line icon, this little area shows up in which I can make the line thicker if I want to. So I want a nice thick line here. And uh, maybe I'll change the color to like a purple. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paint a vertical line. So I'll just start right here. It doesn't matter where it goes, it's just there. It shows up in a weird place over here. We'll fix that later, but I've got this painted. I'm going to save this file as vertical line. Now down here it still says Sprite 1 even though it's titled Vertical Line. So just keep in mind that there is a difference there. It's saved as Vertical Line but it still shows up as Sprite 1. That'll help us for later. Let's add our code to this line. I'm going to go to Scripts, go to Events, and when Flag clicked, I want to make sure that this is hidden. So I'm going to go to my Looks drawer and I'm going to hide this code, or this line. Now, what I want to do is go again back to my events drawer, and I'm going to create an event so that this line shows up when uh, the button is pressed. So I'm going to go ahead and drag over when I receive, and instead of calling it message one, I'm going to call it parts. This is just going to save me time in the future for uh, when I have an actual, the actual code in place. When I receive parts, I want to go to look, and I want to go to show. After going to show, what I'll want to do then is make sure that this is going to a certain place. I'm going to go to the motion drawer, and I'm going to drag over this block that says go to. I'll change this right now, and I'll change it to 55, 1. And let me just click on that. See how that made that nice and straight, and that covered the whole area right here? So move the parts of the system past the, oops, red line. It should have said purple line, but you get the point. Because of how the program works, we're going to want to make all the sprites over here crossing this line in order for the event to happen. So let's go ahead and get those sprites in order. What I'll want to do is click on my first sprite. It doesn't matter which sprite I click on, but just because the heart is listed first, I want to make sure that um, I've got my code here. What I'm going to do is go to my events, drag over when flag clicked, and I'm going to make sure that this is hidden. So I go to looks and I hide it. Now I want to decide where this is going to start. So I'm going to uh, go over here and place it at a good starting place. 
Notice that my icon uh, XY coordinates are constantly changing depending where I put my icon, but over in the top right corner, it tells me the exact coordinates of where my heart is placed or where my sprite is placed. So when the flag is clicked, I want to hide it, but I want to make sure that it's kept right up there. And the nice thing is that uh, uh, Scratch already pre-programs where it's actually located right now, assuming that you're going to want it where it's located. So I want it right there. Maybe I'll move it over a little bit more. And now you'll notice that it didn't change, so I've got to change it. So 148, 54. Now what I'll want to do is uh, do the very same thing for all of the sprites. So when the flag is clicked, I want to make sure that it is, they're all starting in the right place. Instead of clicking on each sprite and dragging over this code, watch what I can do. I can actually drag this code and put it, place it over a sprite, and it snaps back here, but watch what happens. It's now located right here. So now all I need to do is change the coordinates. I don't have to worry about copying this code again. So let me just put it over this lung, snaps back, and the code is copied in lung. And now let me go over to put this code in my trachea. And it snaps back, and it's located in trachea. My liver, let's see where I want that. I want it at 244.43. Okay, my lung, I'm going to want this right here at 230, negative 2. And then my trachea with the label in place is located at 170, negative 64. And so I'll put that in, 170, negative 64. All right, now let's get into the coding and finalize this project. What I'll want to do again is I've been working with the heart. So let's just go back to heart. Now what I'm going to do is go to the events drawer and drag over when I receive, and we'll call it parts. And what I'm going to do is go to the looks drawer and drag over a show. When this broadcast, if you remember that, comes out, I want to show it. And I want to make sure that it's in the place that it was already. So I'm going to drag another go to from the motion drawer and just make sure that these match up together. So the, this, where it starts, should be where it starts when the um, broadcast happens. Next, what I'll want to do is go to the control drawer. I'll drag over a forever block because a forever block is going to make sure that this code runs the whole time the user is on the screen. I'm going to drag over then an if block. Notice that there's two if blocks. There's the if then and then the if then else. What I want is just the if then. I'm going to place that inside of my forever loop. An if is an example of a conditional. Conditional code tells a computer to do something if something is true. So within the if statement, there is this slot right here. I need to fill that slot. What I'm going to fill it with is from the operators drawer. And what I'm going to drag over is this greater than icon. So I'm going to drag over this greater than uh, block, sorry, not an icon, the block. And notice that the greater than block has a slot. So I'll call this slot one and slot two on the left and right. But either way, that's going to go inside the slot of the if block. What I can do now is go ahead and fill these slots. What I'll want to do is go to the sensing drawer and then put video motion on this sprite. So if the video motion on this sprite, and notice it'll highlight depending on where I put it. So if the video motion on this sprite, it says allow, and so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and allow it, and now my screen will show up like this. That's fine for now, and I'm going to just move my screen so you're not distracted. But if the video on the motion for this sprite is greater than, 20. And here's what I mean by that, the video motion. If I have, if I check this box right here, it shows a, a video motion and it can tell, it can detect what type of motion is happening to a particular sprite. So uh, what I'm saying is if the motion on it is more than 20, you can see like 
it's nothing right now, but if I start doing this, it becomes greater, then I want something to happen. Well, what I actually want to have happen is that I want it to move, right? I want it to move to the left. So what coordinate is that that moves left and right? Well, that's your x, y coordinate, sorry, your x coordinate. So I'm going to go to the motion, and I'm going to drag over this block that says change x by, and I'm actually going to change it by negative 10. So now what should happen is if the video motion is occurring on this, I'm going, it's going to be, it's going to start moving by negative 10. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is uh, drag over another if block from the control drawer. And what I want to do is that if it is touching this vertical line, I want it to say something. So what I want it to do is go ahead and in this slot, go to the sensing drawer, and I'm going to drag over this touching. And see, I have to make sure that it's highlighted and goes in there. And I'll click the drag down. And now, what is this called? Well, it says liver, lung. Oh, remember I said there was a different in, difference in title? This will actually be Sprite 1. So if it's touching the Sprite, then I want it to do something. Well, I want it to say something. So I'll go to Looks, and I'll say, yes. I am a heart. And I'll make sure that that says that for four seconds. And then I'll go ahead and hide it. So that's within that if block. So if it's touching this sprite, I'm going to go ahead and hide it. Now, this is getting a little bit annoying, so I'm going to go to sensing and uncheck this uh, video motion just so you, you can't see it. But now, if I run my code, if I click the flag, it hides at everything. But if I click here, what I want to have happen is the video transparency to actually show up. So I'm actually missing some code right here. What I want to do here is when parts is received, let's drag over, turn the video on, and set the video transparency to 50%. Okay? So... The flag is clicked, everything disappears, but when this happens, now my heart shows up. My sprite is not still not showing up, so when I receive parts, I want it to show, and so I'm going to click on that. Now at this point, if I move my heart, yes, I am a heart, and now it'll disappear after it says that for four seconds. Perfect. It's working. It's working the way that I need it to work for now. What I want to do is take this code and, like I've done before, drag it to each one of these. But something does need to change. Snaps back. Is it inside lung? Yes, it is. It's kind of on top of the other one. Is it on liver? Yes, it is, but it's on top of the other one. What I want to do is make sure that I've changed my text so that it's appropriate. So, uh, for liver, instead of saying, yes, I'm a liver, I can say, nope, I'm a liver. And then I can hide that. Okay. So now at this point, I've got a working uh, system. Um, I've got to make sure it's a little bit funky right now. I've got to make sure that everything actually shows up in the right place. But at this point, uh, all of my parts should uh, be in the right place. It looks like I didn't change my coordinates to where I wanted them to be. And once I click on this, these things, if they're in the right place, they'll move over and they'll give me a little description of whether it is a heart or no, it's a liver. But remember, my code, uh, I didn't change my numbers. These should be lining up vertically so that they're uh, over in the right place. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know.